Hi friends and welcome to your daily devotional for Thursday, November 19th, 2020. Our prayers today come from a resource called Daily Prayer, Supplemental Liturgical Resource 5, published by the PCUSA and Westminster Press. This week we are talking about stewardship. Stewardship is about so much more than money. Another thing that often comes up when we are talking about stewardship is being good stewards of our talents. So in the next few moments, I invite you to think about how you have used the talents and gifts that God has given you for God's glory. word from the psalmist today is Psalm 100, and this is from the New Revised Standard Version. Listen now for God's word to us. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let us pray. O God, you alone are worthy of all glory and majesty. We pray you will illumine our hearts and take away all pride, that we may be obedient to your word and bring forth the fruits of good works to the glory of your name in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 48, verses 15 through 22, And this is from the Common English Bible. Listen again for God's word. Jacob blessed Manasseh and Ephraim and said, May the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, may the God who was my shepherd from the beginning until this day, may the divine messenger who protected me from all harm bless the young men. Through them may by name be kept alive and the names of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac. May they grow into a great multitude throughout the land. When Joseph saw that his father had placed his right hand on Ephraim's head, he was upset and grasped his father's hand and moved it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, No, my father, this is the oldest son. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He'll become a people too, and he'll also be great, but his younger brother will be greater than he is, and his descendants will become many nations. Israel blessed them that day, saying, Through you, Israel will pronounce blessings, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. So Israel put Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, I'm about to die. God will be with you and return you to the land of your fathers. I'm giving you one portion more than to your brothers, a portion that I took from the Amorites with my sword and my bow. The Bible is full of underdog stories like this, where the person who is not supposed to be great finds greatness in God. Which one is your favorite story?
Our New Testament reading today comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verses 1 through 11, and this is also from the Common English Bible. Listen again for God's word. Then I looked, and there was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion. With him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven that was like the sound of rushing water and loud thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. They sing a new song in front of the throne, the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been purchased from the earth. They weren't defiled with women. For these people who follow the lamb wherever he goes are virgins. They were purchased from among humankind as early produce for God and the lamb. No lie came from their mouths. They are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying high overhead with eternal good news to proclaim to those who live on earth and to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship the one who made heaven and earth the sea and the springs of water. Another angel, a second one, followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She made all the nations drink the wine of her lustful passion. Then another angel, a third one, followed them and said in a loud voice, If any worship the beast and his image, and receive a mark on their forehead or their hands, they themselves will also drink the wine of God's passionate anger, poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will suffer the pain of fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and the lamb. The smoke of their painful suffering goes up forever and always. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image and those who receive the mark of its name. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There are a lot of opinions out there about what that number 144,000 means. Some say it is symbolic of perfection because, because it is 12 times 12, two perfect numbers. Some suggest that it stands for those who had recently converted to Christianity. Some, such as our Jehovah's Witness and Mormon neighbors, believe that this is a very real number and should be read literally. What are your thoughts on the number 144? thousand. Let us pray. Lord God, creator and ruler of the universe, you have entrusted the care of the earth to its peoples. Grant that your children, surrounded by signs of your presence, may live continually in Christ, praising you through him and with him. Amen. Friends, may the Holy Spirit create in each of us an eagerness to maintain unity with our neighbors and to bless us with the wisdom to know when and how to speak and act so that we might translate the heart of God into the world. Go in peace, sharing God's love. Stay safe. I'll see you tomorrow.